Hey everyone, I'm Sam Weiser, SRT's Education Coordinator, and I'm here to welcome you to another edition of SRT Field Notes from Sequoia Riverlands Trust. Today, we're at SRT's beautiful James K. Herbert Wetland Prairie Preserve, and we're gonna take a look at the vernal pools and some of the critters that make this place amazingly unique and interesting. According to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, vernal pools are depressions in areas where a hard underground layer prevents rainwater from draining downward into the subsoils. When rain fills the pools in the winter and spring, the water collects and remains in the depressions. In the springtime, the water gradually evaporates away until the pools become completely dry in the summer and fall. Vernal pools support plants and animals that are specifically adapted to living with very wet winter and spring conditions followed by very dry summer and fall conditions. One of those animals is the Western Spadefoot Toad, which can be found in vernal pool wetlands throughout the Central Valley of California, including right here in Tulare County. So we're here at a vernal pool at uh, SRT's James K. Herbert Wetland Prairie Preserve. And if you notice behind me, it looks like there are some bubbles in the water. Um, those are actually Western Spadefoot Tadpoles coming up and surfacing looking for air, breathing oxygen. And so these tadpoles right now uh, look like you'd expect. They have a long little tail and a round body, but eventually they're gonna go through a metamorphosis and change and grow legs and hop right out of this puddle. Um, and then eventually, once their feet are fully formed, they'll have these things that help them, these spades that help them basically dig in the ground and they'll dig deep down into the mud and hide so that in the summer when this all dries up and is extremely hot, uh, they'll be safe and cool in the wet mud deep down in the ground. And then next winter, once it rains again, um, they'll burrow their way back up out of the ground and lay eggs in a vernal pool just like this. And the process will start all over again. Wow, those spadefoot toads sure are cool, but they're not the only amazing animal to call these vernal pools home. There are also small crustaceans called fairy shrimp that are perfectly adapted to survive the arid conditions that occur after the vernal pools dry up. So we're back here at SRT's James K. Herbert Wetland Prairie Preserve. And as you can see, it's gotten a lot hotter and drier. So behind me, you can see those annual grasses have dried up and gone to seed. Uh, and in this vernal pool itself, there's no more moisture left. It's all dried up. Um, and so we learned that the Western Spadefoot Toad, the way they avoid these conditions is by using their special feet to burrow down deep into this mud here um, when it's still wet enough so that they can access cool, wet spaces deep down under the soil here and survive there throughout the summer when surface temperatures of these vernal pools can get well above 100 degrees. We also now know that there are vernal pool fairy shrimp, these little crustaceans that live in these vernal pools as well. But they don't have special feet that would allow them to dig deep into this mud and find a safe place to survive the summer. So how do they survive these extremely harsh conditions that occur here until it rains next year or possibly even a few years down the line? So the answer to our question about the survival of these vernal pool fairy shrimp can actually be found right here on the surface of these dried up vernal pools. Uh, so these, these vernal pool fairy shrimp actually leave behind eggs, or in this case what are called cysts. And these are specialized eggs that can survive in extreme conditions, just like the hot and dry surface of these vernal pools during the summer. So while the vernal pool is full of water, these uh, fairy shrimp are growing and eventually they become mature and they reproduce and they uh, develop an egg sac or a, a group of eggs that they carry around with them until they're fully developed and then they eventually leave them behind in the mud of these vernal pools. Unlike the Western Spadefoot Toad, they don't dig down deep into the mud, they just leave them essentially right here uh, along the surface. And so these eggs obviously therefore need to be extremely resilient to the conditions that occur out here. Um, but they're not just resilient for uh, the summer season, they need to be resilient in terms of droughts. This is a place that has a lot of droughts, and so there's no guarantee that next year it'll rain next winter. Um, and so these eggs need to actually be able to survive multiple years without any water and with extreme heat conditions. 
So these are extremely resilient structures. Um, they're in a state of what's called cryptobiosis. So essentially, their metabolism is completely shut off. They can't grow, they can't repair themselves, they can't do anything. They're just in a state of suspended animation. So they're alive, but they have almost no function other than that until they finally get that water, the rain, that'll come hopefully next winter or one of the winters following and will reanimate those fairy shrimp. They will basically cause them to come to life, come out of that state of cryptobiosis and um, hatch out of that small egg. And then eventually, if the conditions are right in the vernal pool they hatch in, they'll grow, they'll mature, and they'll reproduce and eventually create their own uh, clutch of eggs and the cycle will also continue just like the Western Spadefoot. So in conclusion, these extreme conditions we find here in the vernal pool wetlands of Tulare County mean that only the best suited organisms can survive here. And those are organisms like the ones we just saw, like the Western Spadefoot toad with those specialized structures on their feet that allow them to dig down into the mud uh, and the vernal pool fairy shrimp with the specialized cysts or eggs that can survive for years in extreme conditions before hatching. Um, and so to me, I just, I find it amazing that I'm standing here, right here in a vernal pool on a day like this in the summer where uh, the temperature is gonna get well over a hundred degrees and, and stay that way for a couple months. Um, it's crazy to think that there are living organisms right here under my feet, living right now in these extreme conditions, just waiting for that winter rain to come back and bring everything back to life again. Unfortunately, here in the state of California, less than one ten thousandth or 0.01% of the original vernal pool wetland habitat is still intact, with most of it being replaced by suburban sprawl and agriculture. And that makes the work that SRT does to protect these amazingly unique habitats just that much more important. And so we want to take a minute and really appreciate you for taking time out of your day to learn about this work that we do. We really appreciate it and we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. So from SRT's James K. Herbert Wetland Prairie Preserve, I'm Sam Weiser. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon for another edition of SRT Field Notes from Sequoia Riverlands Trust.